A lot of people are confused about how to use Gemini's latest image generation through API. So it's pretty straightforward for you to use it on AI Studio, but the API part is a bit confusing. So I've put together a Google Collab just to explain you how to do that using Python. So this Google Collab will be linked to the YouTube description. You can directly open it and use it, or I'm going to explain you how to do it so you can do it on your local machine as well. First of all, I'm going to show you a very, very simple demo of what we are going to do it in AI Studio then we'll replicate the same thing within Google Collab. So I've got this uh, Google AI Studio and I'm going to select the latest model. In this case, I think it's tagged as hot, which is Gemini 2.0 flash image generation model. Once you select that, select image and text and then select images and text. Then you can upload any image here. So you can either use the upload feature, feature here or you can just drag and drop, copy paste anything that you want. So I'm uploading this picture and then I'm going to say, please color this image i mean this is the input prompt that you want to give you can give anything that you want so for example you can say change this to a cat it would change this to a cat but i'm like my in my mind i'm just imagining like if you were to design an ai powered coloring book how would you do it so you want like something like that and then the end output is something like this so this should be your input and this should be your ideal output this output might change every time because of course we are dealing with an autoregressive model but just to understand we have an input image and we have an output image one of the easiest ways for you to do everything here with ai studio and code is to go to the top hand right side and then click get code so once you click this you'll get python you'll get curl you'll get javascript you'll get go you'll get swift any programming language that you want you can use it so this is one of the easiest ways but for that you need a helper function or helper uh, package from Google, which is Google Gen AI. So that is something that you have to install. And also as a matter of fact, you have to go click here and then get your API key. So once you click here, you will get this particular screen and then you can say create API key and then that will help you create the API key, which you can use in the Google Collab that I'm going to show you. So at this point, you have got access to Google AI Studio. You have got an API key ready. Now move to my Google Collab notebook and in my Google Collab notebook, I first set the API key. So there are two, a couple of ways you can do it. You can either go to the secrets and then do it, or you can do it like me, which is a complete idiotic way to do it in a live demo because this is not my API key. But uh, if you have a computer, so I would strongly encourage you to add this key to your environmental path and then keep it there or not. You can add it to your secrets uh, if you are on server. Once you do that, and it is very important that you store it in this particular name because this is the exact name we will refer later in the code. So then you have to install the Google dash Gen AI Python library. And this is only if you're accessing this through Google AI Studio. If you're going to do it through Vertex, then the topic is totally different. And we are going to use this input image and we are going to kind of like try to generate something like this as an output image. And how are we going to do it? There are a lot of different ways you can do it. You can either go to your folder and then upload the image and then keep it ready. I mean, um, or you can develop an application where you are going to upload the image. But the simplest bare minimum format that I want to show you is I'm going to go to the internet and download the same image. I'm going to store that image as image.jpg. Right now you can see that it's not available. So I'm going to run this particular line of code. And once I run it, you can see it has been downloaded and it has been saved as image.jpg. So you can see my image.jpg is right now available, even though I don't have output image. So now all you have to do is go here and then run this particular line of code. I'm going to briefly explain you what is happening in this code. So if you've got base 64 uh, import just to convert our image into a base 64 format, and then we have got OS just to deal with the OS environment variable. And then we are importing the Google Gen AI and we are importing from Gen AI, we are importing types. This function is going to help you save the file in a particular file format. And this function here is helping you do all the things related to this particular model. This particular model within Google API is called Gemini 2.0 flash X image generation. This is the exact name of the model. So you have to use this model. Uh, if you were to use this model, if you want to use this model, then this is the name that you have to use. And this one is particularly looking for this particular file name image.jpg in your current working directory. So for my this context, this is my current working directory. So this is inside my current working directory. So you basically have to give 
the file path accordingly. So if you're developing it as a SaaS application, then you can give the file path where you expect your users to upload and save the file. So I mean, you would have like a user upload feature and then they would it would get saved in a particular in, uh, place, like a folder directory. You can pick it up from there. And this is basically setting the env uh, API key picking up from the environment variable. Once that is all done, then this is the part where you are going to define that uh, you want, uh, what is the image, uh, what is the prompt that you want to give. I said, please color this. Uh, I'm going to say like, please color this beautifully using five colors. So I'm, I'm just like giving you a different prompt just for you to practice. Okay, so you can say, please color this beautifully using um, five, uh, maybe like red, green, blue i'm not sure if it will work but just let's say this is the input prompt and there are like different content types the the types is what we are importing from here so that uh, you know you align to whatever the type that they're uh, giving there then you have the lm uh, parameters so these are like common parameters that you would typically use with lms temperature uh, generally i usually keep it like below 0.5 but in this case because it's a creative task i've kept it one but i've played it with the uh, particularly this model, I did not see huge difference. Then these um, parameters, you can set it up as it is. One important thing is you can play with maximum output tokens. If you're going to deal with, uh, let's say larger images or multiple chat turn in this case, but in this particular case that I'm doing here, and um, I mean, it shouldn't ideally matter with larger images, I might be wrong, but if you are going to do multiple chat turn, then you can play with this. So we are going to deal with two modalities, image and text. And this is the safety setting. You can go here and then turn off everything. So if you go here by default, I guess everything is turned off. So I click edit safety setting. All these safety setting ideally should be turned off by default. But still, if you feel something is off, then uh, you can go turn it off here. And then the next thing is basically everything, you know, you're trying to use the model and then create an output file. So this is the output file. The We are going to try to save it as output.png. Maybe I should do it as output.jpg. I think that that would be probably better, I guess. Let's see, output.jpg and uh, it finally says that it has been saved. So I'm going to just go here and run this and then see if I've got good luck. The biggest problem with Google is you would often hit a rate limit issue. So because you're using it through AI Studio, so you cannot most likely use it for a production use case, but you should ideally be able to use it for prototyping and everything else. The latency is very fast. You can see that we took just eight seconds completely to run this code with Python and uh, you can use it in different technology and make it work. And I'm going to go see the output file, go to the browser, um, folder here. If you're doing it in local computer, it will get saved in your local working directory. But in my case, this is my local working directory. Double click it and let's see what happens. Okay. Um, we said, how many colors did we say? We said, please color this beautifully using red, green, blue. So we've got red, green, blue. Somehow there is an yellow. Um, I can forgive Google for this probably. And there is a pink. Oh, cool. Is it a, is it a pink, lavender, purple? Uh, why did I say pink? I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's too late for me. And we have got white, uh, but you get the idea. So you can create a SAS by letting users upload the image and then use Google Gemini and do something. You can use it to remove background images. You can do a lot more things and then finally save the image. And then you have got a simple code for a working SAS. And this is using the latest model, which is like kind of viral at this particular point, which is Gemini 2.0 flash image generation experimental model. Let me know what you feel about this code. And uh, like I said, you can do the same thing for uh, let's say JavaScript, curl, go, uh, Kotlin for Android, Swift for iOS app development and anything that you want. I'll share the Google Colab notebook in the YouTube description, use it. Only thing you have to do if you are going to use my notebook is you have to go here, click get API key and then create new API key and then copy the API key and then keep it safe. That's it. After you do this, you can just basically run this code and then it should ideally work fine for you. See you in another video. Happy prompting.